Well, I think the best way to retain heritage is actually to use it. This is probably one of Auckland's iconic streets. It's lined with these beautiful heritage plane trees, which give a real canopy to the street. Freeman's Bay is actually one of the oldest established areas in colonial Auckland. It's uh, located on the western fringes of the city in close proximity to Ponsonby in the waterfront. The property is located in a special character area and that comes with a few constraints about the form and scale of development. It's in a row of, of really similar styled houses and we've got neighbours close by on all sides. The house itself is actually perched on a ridge and the land falls one way to the street and at the rear of the house uh, it falls away again to the north. For us this provided an opportunity to uh, build a two-storey addition concealed from the street that on the lower level allowed us to connect to the garden and upstairs provide a sort of room in the roof without look beyond the site. One of the great things about working on your own home is the chance to experiment and perhaps try things that you wouldn't try out on, on clients' houses because they're a bit of a risk. There's been a very intentional approach to the use of colour and materials in the home. In the original part of the house, we've used colour mostly in muted tones to bring life and a sense of character to quite regularly shaped rooms. As you move through the house and into the new addition, there's a real shift with the emphasis on materiality and texture. In part, this was led by the decision to use recycled materials as a way to link the new home to the original home. We decided really early on to use the bricks that had previously lined the chimneys of the original home as a flooring material but also it's about that shift in mood from the more formal shapes of the old house into the new, more relaxed part of the home. In the bathrooms, we've used really saturated uh, color in a single tone to really provide a very immersive experience. I'm interested in the ritualistic aspects of bathing and, and all of the uh, habits that go around that. And I think that sort of singular, bold approach to color can really help you lean into that. The kitchen is intended as a sort of a hardworking, yet quiet and discreet space. So the Fisher & Paykel products work really well with that design intent. I really like the way that uh, rather than focusing on the design of the element in its own right, there's that thought about how uh, the products work in an overall context. I think good design is about performance and aesthetics in equal measure. So when we're looking to specify anything in our homes, we're looking at, at both of those considerations. The outdoor spaces are intrinsically linked to the indoor spaces, both visually and through kind of devices like the, the doors that slide back, the level threshold, the way the ceiling continues between inside and out. Those little details really help blur the edges between inside and outside and carry your eye out beyond the building line. Probably my favourite part of the home is, is sitting in our new living area, uh, enjoying a coffee in the morning or, or perhaps a drink at the end of the day. I really enjoy the way the light comes in and, and hits the materials and, and moves around. It's a, it's a really pleasant place to be. Those little things to me are really important, watching the way the light moves through the day, seeing the kids come in and kind of move comfortably from space to space, from inside, outside to the pool. Uh, those little moments are, are what life's about. I guess the design has really changed the way that we live in the home and operate as a family. 
rather than it imposing itself on us, it's allowed us to kind of live in the way that has always felt really natural to us. And in that sense, the design of the home really supports the patterns of our everyday life.